Hello and welcome to Barcelona, Spain. It's our first day here. We are staying at an incredible hotel that I will show you later, but today we're gonna to go on a walking tour. It was raining a little bit earlier, but it has stopped, knock on wood, for now. So we will hopefully not get rained on. Let's go. Instead of paying for one subway ride, each we bought a ticket called uh, the familiar ticket that it's 11 just over 11 euro and we'll each get a total of eight rides so we each get four rides okay we each get four rides anyway that saved you some money we just came up from the subway and this is what we walked out to which is incredible what is this alex la sagrada familia we couldn't get tickets here. It's very busy this weekend, but even walking around the outside is definitely worth it. It's very whimsical. There are really cute details on the top of all of the, I don't know, it's really hard to see, but the top has really incredible detail. So it's worth it. Just go come look at it, even if you can't get a ticket, but I would, I would suggest trying to get a ticket. As you can see, it is under construction. They were supposed to finish it in 2026. That was the initial deadline, but they have now moved it to 2036. So maybe in 10 years. It is starting to rain, but we're about to go into the Metro. So hopefully it'll stop raining by the time we surface from the Metro, but we'll see. Like now there's a lot of people in the Metro because of uh, the party of uh, La Merce. We have surfaced and the rain has stopped, which is amazing. And we have come up at one of the most expensive streets and parts of Barcelona. It is called Trafia. And the architecture is really cool. Like for example, up here, it looks like sand mounds. If I ask the question of who was the architect and you answer Antoni Gaudi, you'll be right about 80% of the time. Antoni Gaudi built Casa Milà between the years 1906 to 1912. It took him six years to build because he basically did it from the ground up. And the name Casa Milà has to do with the family that contracted him. The Milà family was very rich and actually the deal that they struck with Antoni Gaudi was that he was allowed to do whatever he wanted. We're coming across another interesting building. To me, it kind of looks like a mermaid. Very pretty. You guys know the drill by now? Who's the architect? Gaudi. Very good, very good. And uh, what is represented here? Even the building next to this mermaid building is gorgeous. And it was made by the rival of the architect that made this building. We're taking a 15 minute break and our tour guide has suggested that we go inside here which is an old parking lot that is turned into multiple i think he said 12 restaurants so it's going to be like a food or a dining hall of some sort he said it was done in the 70s um and that this is the best place to use the public toilets in all of barcelona so i'm going to go inside and do that it is really cool. There's what? Wow. This is a very nicely done food hall. The tour guide said the food here is more expensive than you would find elsewhere, so I don't think I'll actually buy any food, but like I said, the toilets are nice and you can see why because the whole building is very nice the bathrooms are very nice he was he was correct there's even a place to redo your makeup and use some free lotion what'd you get i got pistachio gelato is it good not as good as naples but good okay it's gonna fall so yeah. <laughs> We've moved to Old Town and we've been brought to the Mural of Freedom or the Kissing Mural. And all of the pictures are pictures sent in via social media that people thought represented freedom. So there's all different 
types of pictures on here. Apparently there's one of Gollum from Lord of the Rings. As you can see, Old Town has very different architecture than what we've seen before, or what we've seen so far on the tour. And then this is the cathedral. We're gonna walk by it and then he's gonna tell us more about it after. 14th century, yeah. And it took around 700 years to build. They finished its construction at the beginning of last century. And the thing is that it took so long because they did not like how the facade looked when they finished it and then they redid the facade again. Alrighty, we ended our tour We're in the King Square, walking around Old Town. Very, very different feel and vibe to the rest of the tour, but I probably liked it the best. Then our tour guide gave us some recommendations for things to do while we were here and places to eat. So we are now getting dinner. Then we're going to go back to our hotel and work. Yeah. We will see you tomorrow for day two. Good morning and welcome to day two in Barcelona. We just got to Park Quell and we have a tour. Picked up our radios and headsets for our tour. So I will show you around. It has been raining, but thankfully it just stopped ready for our tour. So hopefully the rain stays away while we walk around. These stones are meant to symbolize or replicate Greece, I think it was. It's really cool, this fire duct. are 78 columns here. The bottoms are mosaics made of ceramic as well as the top. It's beautiful. These are representing the cosmos and the architect made them with recycled materials like recycled bottles, cups, plates. It's really cool. Okay, now we're moving on to these colorful houses. There are two of them, and it's the most crowded part of the park. This is so cool up close. It's really crowded here, but the detail on this house and the house next to it, it's really cool. It's like, a, like an ice palace. But look how crowded it is, and it's rainy today and it's still exceptionally crowded. Okay, this is so weird. This used to be Mr. Quell's house, the guy who created these gardens. Um, he lived here until he passed away and now it's a public school. <laughs> it's like a public school that's protected by the UNESCO World Heritage Site. That's really funny. It's also gorgeous representing a tree and that's why it's called the laundry area. Also, now we are going to see the column. Eh? Also, you can see those stones here to wash clothes. Not very comfortable at all because it's quite high, you know, at least for me, it was very high and also to place the, the water they had to bring it, no, until here. But why do they know that this area was meant to be the laundry area? Because now, let's 
this uh, washerwoman was not designed by Gaudi. One of the workers just decided to build this lady here. This is not designed by Gaudi. But that's why this area is called the laundry area. Up to the hill, is the only one uh, this is the main square with views of Barcelona along the edge. As you can see, it is very crowded, but the views are pretty good. Um, but this main square is very open otherwise. Our tour guide said that they host concerts here in the summer. Very cute place for a concert. We are at Park Well, which is named after the owner of the park. This used to be a rocky, kind of barren mountainside, and Mr. Well bought this plot of land in the mountains with the plans to make it a neighborhood for wealthy families. It's supposed to have 60 homes for people to essentially escape the pollution and overcrowding of the Barcelona city center. So if you had enough money, you could kind of get out of there. Um, that did not happen. And in fact, there were only three homes that were built. Mr. Wells, Gaudis, he's the one that designed the park. And then Mr. Wells, lawyer, who has a home that his family actually currently owns still, which is kind of cool. Anyway, so there's three main reasons why they did not complete the project of 60 homes. Number one, is that it turned out to just be too far from the city center. There was not great public transit uh, over 100 years ago, as you can imagine. And so it was just a very long travel day for folks to go in and out when they wanted to go to the city center. A lot of those wealthy families also had workers for them, servants, and those servants did not live with them. They would have had to come up here, then go all the way back down to the city center and do that every day. And that just was not very fun for the servants. Probably the most important reason was that Senor Well, he said that every single plot of land that was meant for a house, only 20% of that plot could actually be the home and the other 80% had to be gardens or backyard. That would obviously significantly limit the size of the home and these wealthy families wanted big homes. So because the plan was essentially an epic failure, the park just remained a park. And there are beautiful aqueducts, various little caves. One of the reasons he wanted the homes to only take up 20% of each plot was because he was really passionate about this remaining a place of nature. And so all throughout the park, there are nods to things in nature, animals in nature, caves, trees, the cosmos here. He used a lot of recycled materials. So their loss, although they were rich, they didn't actually care that it failed, but their loss is our gain. And now it's a beautiful park. This park is public for the folks who live here in the neighborhood. For everyone else, you have to pay to come in. It opens late because there's a school on the ground. So they don't want the kids to have to go to school in this chaos. So it opens a little bit late so the kids can go to the school before all the tourists come out. So we realized these houses were modeled after Hansel and Gretel, which definitely makes sense now that I look at them. They just look like sugar plum fairy houses to me. Very whimsical, which is a common theme of some of the architecture in Barcelona. When you leave the park, you come out to a little neighborhood. And in that neighborhood, there is like the Gaudi experience. And they have a replica of where we just were with the 78 columns and the staircase and everything. And the salamander. We're not going to do this experience, but that's a pretty cool replica. Good morning and welcome to day three of Barcelona. We are in the rain, but that's okay. We're walking along La Rambla. Rambla? La Rambla. Right now, I don't know if these are always out, but right now it is filled with these cute little markets. So we're going to walk around and see what we can find. These street lamps are fascinating to me. Very pretty. A lot of the restaurants are like tapas. A lot of them have paella. I cannot speak to if the food is good or not, but the location is very nice. Apart from there's currently a ton of construction. Not sure if that's all the time or just happens to be right now. Inside here is a famous market. The market but it is extremely crowded in there. 
Actually, so is this whole street, but it's even more so in there. So we're gonna skip that for today. But I hear that it's amazing. But we're gonna continue walking down La Ramba Street. Okay, we made it to the end of the road and I would say it's mostly flower shops, caricature drawings and paintings and restaurants with tapas. Now Alex go. has to go to the music hall. The, the palace, the musical palace. Okay, you'll, you'll record that. I have to go run some errands, but you'll see. You'll hear from Alex in a second. Bye. I'm currently walking to the Palau de la Musica to check that out. Apparently it is very beautiful outside and inside. So we'll see how that goes. I'm walking up to the Palau de la Musica. The outside so far looks really cool. Some very cool columns. This is the entrance as you walk in. And this is a bar slash cafe you can sit and eat at if you want. Looks very beautiful. This is the symbolic foundational stone um, of this building. And this was laid in 1905, and the building was completed in 1908, so pretty quick. This is the main stage. Our tour guide is currently playing the organ. So he lied to us, and that was an automated playing. However, it was live, so that's pretty cool. And also the main stage. These are stairs, royal stairs, as we call it, made for the rich. So we are going now to the Calvary. This fantastic inverted dome representing the sun. The idea of that sun is nothing to do with what we want in a place like this is to cover every external light. Palau de la Musica is a UNESCO heritage site and it is run by the Orfeo Catala, which means Catalan Choir. I just got done with the tour and it was amazing. The building itself is beautiful, both the outside and the inside. Very intricate, very colorful. I'm a big fan of stained glass, and so that was my favorite part, was all the stained glass. Obviously not as grand as the Sydney Opera House, Vienna Opera House, things like that, but I think that aesthetically, I probably prefer this building just because of how colorful and beautiful it was. More modern kind of Art Nouveau type of architecture and art in there. I feel like it'd be a really cool place to see a performance. They're known for their choirs. If you're ever in Barcelona and you want to see a high quality choir, the tickets here apparently are also relatively affordable. I would definitely recommend checking this place out. Worth a visit. Now I have to go find Amy. Okay, it starts with wine and champagne over here, then some other little soft drinks. Then you can get bread, some crisps, some pickled vegetables, soup, looks like a pear and asparagus, some pasta and fish, cheesy potatoes, some more fish, some rice and chicken, I think, some fruit, mango juice, tiramisu, chocolate cake, and that's it for dinner. Okay, now I will quickly show you the gym. It's very nice. We have bikes, treadmills, ellipticals, more bikes, a water cooler where we refill our water bottles, nice lounge chairs, they have towels, rowing machine. Oh, someone left their towels and mats. Hmm. 
Maybe I'll pick those up for them. Um, some weight machines, squat rack, and some weights. So, pretty good gym. They even have their weights. What the heck? Put your gym equipment back. Let's go to the pool. All right, moving on to the pool area. It's currently sunset, so you'll get to see all the pretty lights. There's a pool bar that is open till, well, I thought it was 10, but no one's there. So maybe it's seven. And then you come out to this beautiful pool and beautiful sunset, tons of seating. A nice long pool. Down there is the spa and bathrooms, but I don't have access to the spa, so I won't show you. You only get access if you book a service. So lots of seating areas. And today when it was sunny out, there were tons of people out here. But now, after sunset, there's no one. Anyway. It's our last night here and there are fireworks going off and we have an amazing view of them. It's some type of bank holiday today. I don't know if that's if it's also some sort of actual holiday. But Okay, actually we're confused because we asked Siri and she said that there was no holiday today in Spain. Today is September 24th. So, can someone let us know does this just happen every bank holiday? <laughs> Or, or something specific going on today in Spain or Barcelona. Thanks. <laughs> also, this show has been going on for over 20 minutes. So it's an intense fireworks show. Hi, this is the room. We're leaving, so all our stuff's packed up, but that's the entryway. Then there is, can you show the coffee? This little coffee station, which is nice. Then a little desk. I'm gonna flip you around so you can get the whole view of the room. It's a little messy. We got a king size bed, TV on the wall, little couch. It's wonderful. Great view of Barcelona, blackout curtains. We've got this gorgeous bathroom. Tub has all of our dirty towels in it, sorry. Got a little vanity, double sinks, shower, toilet, and a closet with the robes and slippers that you can keep. So that's the room. Okay, it's our final breakfast. Just quickly showing you some veggies, some fruits, milk, cereal, box bagels, yogurt, and honey, as well as some water and fruit juices and champagne and coffee, if that's your thing. Second station is all the pastries, jams, jellies, some meats and cheeses, lots of different options, as well as bread and a toaster and another coffee machine. And the final station is the hot bar station. This is where you'll have like the eggs, sausage, bacon, you'll find Alex. You can get your own omelet or any eggs. Any eggs cooked the way you want, as well as tomatoes potatoes and mushrooms anyway bye thanks for watching and we'll see you next week we'll probably see you again barcelona and thanks for the fireworks show alex do you want to join me
Hi. Or as some people say, Barcelona. And as some people, everyone who lives here. I hurt my wrist. So two round trips. Yes. Per no, person. Four round. No. Two round trips per person. Because that would be it. Yes, two round trips per person. Yeah. I did, we are, it is starting to rain. Yeah. La Rambla Street. La Rambla. Okay, you can say it then, Mr. Roll Your R's. La Rambla. Okay. Drop my phone.